Everything in the world is becoming a subscription service. Get ready to set aside a monthly allowance for air premium when you start getting charged for every single little bit of oxygen you breathe once they find a way to monetize that. It's just such a frustrating trend. It's worse than Tide Pods, honestly. But what's even worse about the subscription plague is when some services make it very difficult to cancel, making it a ton of hoops that you have to jump through and just a complete nuisance. And there's no industry worse about this than journalism. This is, I, I don't know what's happened to journalism, but it is fucking atrocious. Not only like the quality of articles, but even just the ability to access articles. I've done this on stream innumerable times by this point. Where if you go to an article without an ad block on, you can't see the article because it's just completely filled, inundated with ads out the wazoo, with autoplaying banner ads in uh, paragraph ads that split everything up, and all you see is ads. And if you go on mobile, you're better off just closing your eyes. You'll get the same amount of information. It's terrible. It's absolute trash. It should be illegal. Like, I actually think there should be a limit to how many ads can be on these websites because you, you can't even access the content. It's unacceptable. And some websites don't even allow you to see an article without your ad block being turned off, which is why I have it off when I stream so I can at least access an article. If that's the word, I, I don't even know if I can use that word for it because the only thing I'm accessing is a goddamn migraine looking at all these fucking stupid ads that are just like laser beaming my eyes. But if you do make the mistake of subscribing to some of these journalism outlets in order to actually read some of their trash, you become their bitch. You become their prisoner for life. You're trapped in there with them. Like, you you can't escape. It's, a, it's an actual Elden Ring DLC boss battle if you try and unsubscribe from some of these outlets. And the worst culprit by far that I can find is The Economist. I saw these screenshots today and learned that this is common practice for The Economist when you try and unsubscribe. There are so many posts on Twitter and Reddit as well as just like other forums that document how painful of an experience it is to unsubscribe from The Economist because they make it as difficult and complicated and long as possible in the hopes that you'll just give up and just keep your subscription. It's so foul. That has to be illegal. It really does. But anyway, here's the uh, live chat here because in order to unsubscribe from The Economist, you have to talk to somebody there. You can't just automatically do it, which I feel should be a basic necessity if you're offering a subscription service. You should have a way to automatically unsubscribe and cancel it. I don't think you should have to communicate with anyone at the company you're unsubscribing to, but at The Economist, they clearly disagree. So here they say, hi Austin, with an exclamation point, super excited to be having this conversation. Party poppers just went off the second this live chat was initiated. Sorry to hear that you wish to cancel your subscription. I'll certainly help you with your request. Allow me a minute. While I'm doing that, may I know how your day has been so far? To which they just say, fine, thanks. Short, sweet, to the point. No one really wants to be making small talk through the live chat here when they're on a mission to just unsubscribe, which should be a quick, easy process. They go, I'm glad to know about your day, Austin. Yeah, pumping their fist. I'm glad to know about it. I can see you have a monthly digital subscription with the renewal date of the 5th of July, 2024. May I know if there is any specific reason that you wish to unsubscribe with us, Austin? To which he replies, ads. Pause. That's crazy. So you're paying to subscribe to this journalism outlet, and you're still getting ads. I was under the impression that if you subscribe to one of these outlets, you don't get ads anymore, and you actually get to read what they publish. That is shocking, that you're paying to still get ads on these fucking websites. That's like malware. Th like, th these journalism outlets are like actually malware you're paying for, I suppose. That blows my mind. Thank you for the information. I'm sorry the inconvenience this may have caused. If I may know, how do you access the content through app or website? I love that you have to take like a fucking exit survey here just to unsubscribe. Lovely. What a great process. Website. I'm not trying to be rude, but can I please just cancel without all these questions? Exactly. No one likes to be interrogated about wanting to unsubscribe from this service. It's ridiculous. Thank you for the information. Uh, apologies for the hassle. I will help you with your request. Thank you for patiently waiting. To explain, the Economist ads are clever, witty, and thought-provoking. They're driving like this hard sell on like, well actually, these ads are incredible. We have innovative ads that use these things called jokes. Humor 
is actually one of the most important things of The Economist, because we believe, if you're reading The Economist, we gotta put a smile on that face. And we do that through these extremely clever and witty ads. Oh my god, it's so fucking dystopian. They engage readers by making them feel part of an elite club. For instance, iconic ads imply that reading The Economist makes you smarter or more informed. Like most media outlets, The Economist relies on advertising revenue to sustain its operations. Ads help cover production costs, pay journalists, and maintain the quality of content. I have no doubt that customer service is trained to do this. It's not something they really want to be doing. But holy shit, that is such a crazy thing to attempt, like, oh, you're leaving because of ads? Are you sure? Our ads are witty. Like, th 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 ads should be a reason you'd want to stay. Our ads are so good. Like, I can't believe you'd want to leave because of ads. That's a kind of a stupid reason. Let me explain to you why you should stay, because these ads are so fucking good. I also love trying to guilt them a little bit, like, well, ads are a necessary evil, well, excuse me, not evil, a necessary blessing to our readers because they help sustain the website and pay for all of these costs. Well, what the fuck is the point of the subscription service then? Like, you're double dipping. If you're subscribing to something here, you, you shouldn't be getting ads on top of it too, at least I don't think so. Or at the very least, non-intrusive ads. If you're still going to put ads to subscribers, it should at the very least rule out the possibility of getting in-video ads, banner ads, in-article ads, fucking audio blasting ads. Like, it should... If you're going to put ads into these subscriptions, I suppose, it should be the least intrusive ones, like at the very bottom of an article, perhaps. Like, it's, it's stupid. This is really stupid. But above all, you should just let people be able to unsubscribe without this kind of hassle. This is absurd. So, it's not just, you know, a live chat that you have to go through. Though there is so many screenshots from people having almost identical experiences with the economist live chat when trying to unsubscribe there's also been cases where they kind of require you to call if you don't want to wait in a live chat queue so your options are either call the economist or go through this song and dance with live chat like that's so inefficient and just a complete waste of time and it's on purpose because like i said the idea is if you make it a long tedious process most people or not most people, some people will probably just be like, okay, fuck it, I'll just keep subscribing and I'll occasionally read this, I suppose. Like, it's just one of those things, like, a gym membership. Gym memberships are notorious for this, where if you try and cancel a gym membership, they require you to go in there in person in some places in order to cancel it, and for a lot of people, that makes it a lot more inconvenient, so they end up pushing it and procrastinating, so they end up paying for it longer than they planned on. It's that same practice here from The Economist, but worse, because now you have to directly be interacting with and being guilted by and getting fucking, like, car salesmen on by their representatives at The Economist. It's unacceptable. Now let's take a closer peek here at the process. Cancel your subscription. We're sorry to hear that you would like to cancel your subscription. Best way to get in contact with us is through our live chat service, which is open 24-7 and directs you to that service. Uh, why, why do you have to get in contact with them? Why not just offer like an automatic cancellation service as opposed to a live chat one? I think that's a little much, but whatever. Alternatively, if you don't want to wait there, you can find some phone numbers with a dedicated service center that will be happy to assist you. So you get to, con you get to contact someone directly who will be giving you these sales pitches as you're trying to leave the service. And if you look to the right there, you can see the live chat that this user has started. Uh, before I process your account, I would love to tell you about the Espresso app. The Espresso app from The Economist, which is a slimmed down version of The Economist, offers a condensed experience which you can fully personalize to what you enjoy. It's super popular for people with less time on their hands. You can stay connected to the content while commuting, running, or doing your grocery shopping, and you have access to another free trial. It costs $12.90 for the month, or $1.29 per year. Sorry, it's a little blurry there, I couldn't read that. So they're trying to unsubscribe from The Economist, and while they're trying to process that request, they're trying to pitch them on another service from The Economist. An app that does the same fucking thing, but in a different way. Who the fuck thinks that's a good idea? Oh, I see you want to leave The Economist. Well, have you thought of downloading The Economist app? Our partner companion app? Well, here's why you should do it, and here's the cost for doing it. Would you like me to sign you up? I can do that real quick while I'm processing your unsubscribe request. It's a standalone app which you will have to download from your Play Store or App Store and use separately. 
I can switch you to the free trial espresso today. This offer will reduce your payment from twenty nine ninety. Jesus Christ, it's it's just ridiculous. I can't even keep reading it. It's so absurd. Anyway, I'm not going to keep ranting about this. You get the point. If you're offering a subscription service, offer an easy, convenient way to cancel it. That's it. That should be a actual law that if you have that, you must also have a way of getting rid of it easily without it being a complete fucking nuisance. That's really about it. See ya.